I wish the number. I wish the minutes oh, would like man. not keep changing. Jeez. <laughs> oh Christ! Shut up, Swaggins, <laughs> son of a gun. Checking. Stan's right. freaking ugly mug. That shocked the hell out of me, man. Oh, yeah, bite for the heart attack. Oh, that was beautiful. This bottle of Tango Mo is empty. I didn't know. Dude, another one bites. The back, Yo. Mango Tango though. Oh, oh, Mango Tango. Rip. Let me move this out of the way. Second 120 is almost done. Dude, all right, I'm, you guys ready? Never We're did. unmuted, Oops. by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm so horny right now. Dicks. <laughs> all dicks. right, here we go. Black Friday. <laughs> What's going on, friends? It is Friday night and uh, Black Friday. Black Friday night. Why it's got to be black? Who knows? But it is Black Friday night and it is tonight. Vape stew is happening. Um, maybe a couple dangle clacks because of, of new edit issues, new, anyway, shut up, it was an accident. You guys grab your favorite vape, grab yourself a, ah, oh, grab yourself a, uh, awesome apple juice, sit back, <laughs> relax with us, and enjoy the show. My name's Stan, and you have found the Tenacious TX Vapes channel. Did you just say thick? This is off. <laughs> Live streaming. Totally thought that uh, paper towers for something else there, Scott. <laughs> He's excited. He's excited oh, about the show. Oh, Shine. Boom! Oh, no, Say no, what's no. up, panel. What's up? What's panel? up? Hey, hey we are here, so you don't Dude, have I'm to be. I'm digging the logo. What? Oh, you like it? That is sexual. Nice, bro. It looked good on yours too, right? Oh, yeah. Oh. You never liked how I had it all. Like uh, you always oh. thought that it was poor quality, so I had to. Up that the is game, awesome. Bro. Does that have music too? Yeah, dude. <sighs> yeah, dude. I got so I got bumpers. I got bumpers for every segment, so be prepared to change your shorts at the end of the show. All I right. am so proud. We or have. Yeah, or during it through Scott. <laughs> we have a couple of awesome guest <laughs> panelists here today. We have Mr. Frames Janklin. Say hello, Frames Janklin. Hello, Frames Janklin. What's up? What's up, Stooges? And down here we have Mr. Black Cat Whiteface. Oh, what's happening? We were not quite sure that Mr. Swaggins was going to be here this evening, so... I said, hey, you guys come on because it'll be a great show. Fill in for Swaggins. And then Swaggins showed up and we were so happy. And now we have an awesome, huge panel for you guys to have a great woo, show woo. with, I'm sure, a whole lot of banter and ridiculousness. So let's run through real quick and uh, do some uh, shout outs, Mr. Nick Bissett. Check it out. Bam! Wait. I'm in charge of shout outs now? Yeah, bro. <laughs> Is that a bumper too? Yeah, yeah, dude. You got to warn us. Bumper. Do it. It's done. Okay. Hold on. I'm watching it now. Now I have to watch it. You got to wait <laughs> the four seconds. <laughs> I'll do the shout outs. I just want to see the damn bumper first. Okay. All right. All right. I get it. It's okay. Yeah. I know you get excited oh. about stuff like this. Oh, oh yeah. It's okay. Good, that's dope. All right. I'm into it. <laughs> I'm into hey, hello, it. friends. All right. All right. Let me scroll up here. I am on live chat. So first of all, we got... Poon sauce McNasty. He's the first McNasty. one. Congrats. Uh, we have Jane Dodd, Ms. Shy Tots. We've got that guy, Matt. You know that guy. We have Cody Vogler. Frames Janklin Vapor. Who's that guy? <laughs> got <laughs> Wired Talk with Big G. GBV Jerry A. Uh, RB Mark II. We have it, Mr. Vapor Swaggins, of course. Uh, Day, Mark two. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. MK2, Mark 2. Anyways, yeah. Daytime Frank. Todd Black is here. Hello, Mr. Black Cat White Face. Who's that guy? Who's that oh. guy right next to me? <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 
We have Ranger Vapes. I heard he's got some pretty good specials going on for this Black Friday. Robert Weatherington. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, Billy and CO. We have Tenacious TX Vapes saying, enjoy all the new Graphiox and music. <laughs> Graphiox. Graphiox. Grab your Graphiox. I have no Graphiox <laughs> to give, my friend. <laughs> we got Rick Ross in the house. That's pretty cool, guys. You have Rick Ross. So. Every day he's hustling. Uh, we've got Quicksilver 7. Um, who else knew? Mark Clough is here. Uh, I showed off his mod right here um, on my latest video. Um, John Q. Geezer. We've got Oh My Lanta. Hello there. Mr. Overdrip as well. Hello there. Ricky Mahoney. Two more. Fog Dog is in the house. What's up, dude? And the True Vapor. And British for British eyes only. Hello. The true All right. Vapor is here. True oh, Vapor is here. Yeah. Well, where's the fake? Like my Chris of GB. Where's the not True Vapor of GB? The, yeah, the SMM of GB, Mr. Chris the True Vapor. <laughs> Suck my Chris. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, very cool. Very cool. So. <laughs> Just so you guys know, if you have any kinds of questions or shout outs or anything you want us to get to during the show that we may or may not get to, we are going to have an email segment from now on. We do have some emails, but if you have anything that you want us to get to eventually, or maybe even today, if I see it and it's interesting, um, go ahead, vapestew at gmail.com. Put them in there. Anything you want, whatever. That's all good. If it's mean, that's cool too. I'll just skip it. But thank you for being here. Um, that is, however, the one segment I don't have a bumper for. Oh, look. It's the actual black cat with a white face. It's, uh, it's Waylon yeah, Jennings. Oh my gosh. And hey, he has Waylon the coolest Jennings. name ever, Mr. Waylon Jennings. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's do this. And Mr. Waylon Jennings. Which That's guest? better than Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> he needs his own Instagram. <laughs> yeah, he does. Hey, what's your Absolutely. cat's You can take over mine. I haven't used it in like three months. <laughs> Mr. Waylon Jennings. Me either. Mr. Oh. Waylon Jennings. That's right, Dad Nabbit. Uh, Frames Janklin Vapor, thank you for being on the show. Why don't you give us a little bit of what you're vaping on, Killa? Oh, I got a couple things. Changed a couple things out since the green room. If you guys didn't catch that, you can go check that out on my channel. It's a little show I do here before the stew. But, uh, of course, it wouldn't be Friday for me without hashtag shed time. My Aspen Modco Monarch got the dang RDA on top from Mr. Ownboy OC and Twisted Messes. Inside, got some rescued e-liquid Ben. You guys didn't know they're doing 50% off on their stuff over on rescuedeliquid.com. Go grab you guys some because it's absolutely delicious. <laughs> Next setup I got is the uh, L Thunder 2700, one of my all time favorites, with an RDA for vaping by Ooh, Mr. Coil Turd. Dude, look at that. Look at that. Why am I setup not doing right that there? same nice. exact setup? Look at that. Look at that. Got that Blizzard Chop Top on top. Stan called me out earlier today. In the vape stew crew facebook group about my match <laughs> take and i think like the first two setups like speak for themselves i am the king of matchy matchy <laughs> just so you guys know uh i'm, I'm just gonna put that keanu out there approved but of course yeah <laughs> even keanu agrees a sense that you know i have quilters rda i had to throw some of his liquid in there through some boule bolu hashtag banana land and let me just say <clears throat> it tastes phenomenal out of this setup loving it so far um next setup i've got is uh got the unicorn vert all black you know of course got the goon 25 on top inside i have some tango from transistor pineapple mango one of my you know favorites from the transistor line and uh what else do i got here i got a couple other things <laughs> I got one more uh another another a testament to my match game here uh another Vert Odium set up there. Look at that match game. All the way down to the District 5 one tip. What? Yeah, dude. I uh, got some for British Eyes only coils in here as well, and they're absolutely ripping. And shout outs to Steel Valley Vapor, one of the sponsors on the green room. Bottled Violence Caramel Custard on the inside of that. And uh, that's pretty much it for me. That's, that, that's all I got, man. Perfect. Perfect. Right on time, brother. Guess what? We have a new segment that we are going to... We I got a couple things I want to talk to you guys about. Um, number one is something that I find interesting. And number two is something that Mr. Black Cat Whiteface brought up to me on his 
in the hot tub earlier this evening. My doctor have... visit? Huh? You're not going to talk about that, are you? My doctor visit? <laughs> yes, yes. That, that's exactly <laughs> not going to talk about that, are you? So no. um, make sure you guys go check out uh, Black Cat Whiteface in the hot tub every Friday. His link is down in the description as well as Frames Janklin Vapor. But right now we're getting to what's the secret. Is there a graphic? <laughs> Bam! So, I wish we could see it too, like in, in real time. You can time. see it right now. You can see it right now. It's coming right. across your screen in just a second. So earlier today, I was doing a little research, and I found the most significant research that I have seen in a long time. And uh, I don't care about what you think about this publication. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that this research and this this study is just some of the most in-depth and absolutely amazing research that i've ever come across and um <clears throat> you know what why don't i just share it with you guys why don't i just do that bam here is that is not that is not the that is not the internet um <laughs> that just reminded me of have you guys seen I... this, have you guys seen the show living with yourself with paul rudd yes yeah the scene where he's presenting to <laughs> He turns his computer on and, and goes up on the projector pops and he's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's fantastic. That's one of the best parts of the whole show, honestly. So, bam. Here we go. Scientists say, basically, this is what this is saying. Earth endangered by new strain of fact-resistant humans. I saw that. This is amazing research that we have to discuss right now, Okay. Um, basically, and you know what? It's short. I'm just going to read it to you so that you, we can all comment on it afterwards because this is great. Um, the New Yorker, Mr. Andy Barowitz, um, says, Minneapolis, this is from 2015, but I find that it still holds water because this, com this, this actually tells me a whole lot about what's happening right now in politics even. Um, Scientists have discovered a powerful new strain of fact-resistant humans who are threatening the ability of Earth to sustain life, a sobering new study reports. The research conducted by the University of Minnesota identifies a virulent strain of humans who are virtually immune to any form of verifiable knowledge, leaving scientists at a loss as to how to combat them. These humans appear to have all the faculties necessary to receive and process information, says Davis Logsdon, one of the scientists who contributed to the study. Uh, I said that wrong. And yet, somehow, they have developed defenses that, for all intents and purposes, have rendered those faculties totally inactive. More worryingly, Logsdon said, as facts have multiplied, their defenses against those facts have only grown more powerful. <laughs> Pave. <laughs> Uh, while scientists have no clear understanding of the mechanisms that prevent the fact-resistant humans from absorbing data, they theorize that the strain may have developed the ability to intercept and discard information en route from the authority nerve, auditory nerve of the brain to the brain. The normal functions of human consciousness have been completely nullified, Logsdon said, while reaffirming the gloomy S assessments of the study, Logsdon held out hope that the threat of the fact-resistant humans could be mitigated in the future. Our research is very preliminary, but it's possible that they will become more receptive to facts once they are in an environment without food, water, and oxygen, he said. This is awesome. Um, at least I think so. Uh, I, I absolutely love this article. Um, I can't tell if it's real or if it's a joke, but at the same time, I read it, and they talk about scientists making, you know what? I'm going to believe it. I believe it. It's a, it's a thing. Fact-resistant humans, we are all uh, in, in the really big danger of robots taking over because of fact-resistant humans. What say you? My son-in-law fits in this completely. Go ahead. He, literally. <laughs> he's the dumbest son of a bitch I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> he is literally the dumbest motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I've ever spoken to, and you can you can tell him things, and he just he will not he doesn't understand it. Doesn't he, he would argue complete opposite without any rational or reason. You know this this is so pertinent for the time because we just had Thanksgiving, and some of us may have had second Thanksgiving because they had to do it with their in laws, etc. That's what season. I did today. And I'm not saying anybody's <laughs> stupid, but everybody has a family member. You know, everybody oh, yeah. has a family oh, yeah. member that you're. They're like, oh. 
Karen's coming. Karen's <laughs> oh, going to be there. <laughs> you know, I just chose Karen because, you know, it's just everybody knows names. you couldn't have got a Karen's better name. A busy bitch. But what I was saying earlier, I said in the chat, the article is from 2015. <laughs> so I just want to point that out because there might be some people that are like, it's an old article, but I think it's actually pretty hilarious because although the article is from 2015, it's four years later. And uh, we can see how much we've advanced as a as a society. We'll see what happened was years. that they they found this stuff out in the infancy of the of the problem, and now we're starting to see the issues come up that that this is causing. See, that's what's happening. Yeah. Um, and uh, and next it's thing almost we know, Orwellian. Next thing we know, Black Cat Whiteface's son-in-law is going to be the president. Oh, oh good lord. <laughs> <laughs> He'll never be. He might be the president. If you're, if you're, <laughs> Matter if you're fact, his chief of staff, I'll totally vote for him. <laughs> I would not be anywhere near him <laughs> in any capacity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I, I honestly, what if it's some kind of like, let me put my tinfoil hat on. What if it's some kind of like alien implanted strain of bacteria that causes you to just like completely argue with everything truthful that's said to you, just no matter what? No, those pe- people just, uh, is, they're called pessimists and they've just found something that empowers them, annoying other people by taking a stance that they know is ridiculous, Let's but they decide see. to believe it so that way they can live with themselves. I'm gonna they do- live with blinders on. They live with these blinders on. Everybody annoys them. Everybody sucks. Trump's a fascist. <laughs> and uh, and they need to tell you about it. They have they have no, like it's almost like a a, a, a vomit reflex. They cannot keep it down. They have to ruin your day with their uh, nonsense. So I'm going to disagree with the article. I think people will believe anything that is read on Facebook and they only read the title. So it's like they only just regurgitate that. Right. There was, it was like that, like chain email that went around about dihydrogen monoxide and like everyone was started freaking out and it's like, you realize it's water and then they go, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> But like there were a few people out there, the real like bottom of the barrel that straight up thought that dihydrogen monoxide was going to be the next like uh, Agent Orange or something like something awful that's going to wipe out human beings. But yeah, people will believe whatever they read on the Internet, like those quotes from Abraham Lincoln that was like vapor swagons is awesome. Um, (laughs) It even points to like a picture. (laughs) <laughs> it even points to like what's going on here with our industry, how people are so quick to just read the headline and believe it as truth. Yeah. It's laziness you know what is what it just is. Like, Have you guys seen uh, the movie Wally? Well, you know how everybody's fat and no. bones yeah. tra- change and everything like that because they're lazy because machines do everything for them. It's That's not a big basically spoiler. what it is. You have so much information all the time that you can't they know that that we I mean it's exactly what happened to us in the vape industry. It's like it's constantly pushing things through from all sides. It's it's overstimulation. You can't stay organized. You can't keep it all straight. So what do you do? You compromise and you skim through shit. Exactly. And you, and you cut corners. And I'm actually yeah. glad that um, Frames brought it up because the, the the whole point of this was to kind of poke fun. Um, <clears throat> this is a I'm pretty sure this is a serious article, but the whole the whole thing that, of reading it and showing it to you guys is the fact to uh, point point the finger and poke a little fun at the people that. Like, uh, who are we talking about? Was it Char- Charlie that was talking about them bringing up the popcorn lunga thing thing again? Yeah. It was an article from yeah. 2017, and they posted it just the other day as if it was, like, something. This thing's yeah. been debunked, like, five or six times these over. People are, these people have a care. name. They're called the Antis. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, it, it's it's just one of those things where where people read headlines. People don't believe truth they don't believe facts they don't believe actual statistics they want to make up they want to take the made up statistic of the article headline that's the most you know towards their cause or towards um the most extreme negative thing that they can think of and that's what they go with and unfortunately that's the nature of society we live in right now yeah, um, and it kind of goes to like what Swaggins was saying is like every, there's so much information that's out there and available to people and is just pushed forth so constantly that a lot of people, I feel like, just don't take the time to actually look up what's going on because all they got to do is turn on Fox News and just <sighs> listen for 10 minutes and hear the four or five things yeah. and then they feel they're informed. Let's be honest. Yeah. It, it's a lot. It can be a lot of work. I mean, I've, I've experienced yeah. it just going on it Twitter. Is. 
Cause Twitter, you can fall, you can fall victim to it. And if you're trying to live that life, like practicing what you preach, which I'm trying to do, you don't just retweet. Like if I see black cat, white face post something, I know it's a trustworthy and reliable source that he's read. Cause I know the guy Scott's, you know, he, he, he dives deep into it like anybody else, you know, on this panel. Right. But I could retweet it, but I need to read it myself or else I'm not practicing that thing. You know, so it's like it, then it becomes a lot of work because then every time you tweet, you're reading an article and that article might link to another article that's the, that's the original source. You got to read that too. And then, you know, if you're, and then it might infuriate you or frustrate you or you're already stressed out and aggravated by it. So it's like, it winds up being easier just to read a headline and, and retweet it or whatever. But if you're going to, if you're going to, if we're going to change the problem, um, cause I'm treating this article seriously, right? If you're going to change this problem, then you have to, you have to practice it. You have to practice being educated and it takes time. It really does. Oh. I mean, it's, it's still easier than going to a library and going the, in the Rolodex or whatever, the big shelves that smell musty and old because they are, and you yeah. open it up and you got to find the book you want. And then some old lady goes in the back room and gets it for you. And then you read, you know, the index and find the chapter. And then you read the sentence in the paragraph yeah. of the chapter you need. It's still easier guys. It's yeah. Just, you got to refresh up on the Dewey line. decimal system and all that. Remember the Dewey decimal system oh, dude, yeah, Dewey decimal was with a little dog yeah. that taught you about it. Like the video yeah, you yeah. had to watch with the bouncing or ball. I, I remember watch. that. Um, I think, you know, I think it's funny cause it's like the internet allows you to be very investigate. Like, like we were just talking about, you can investigate pretty much anything that comes out and, that we're, we're in this defensive type stance when it comes to vaping, right? I've been using my hands a lot today. Stan, the hands? Yeah. I'm using my hands a lot today. I don't know what to do but, with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> but we're in this what? defensive type spot. So like an anti can grab anything. The antis are only looking for things that are, generate fear. Like they want to generate like some sort of fear in you. That this is fear going to happen yeah. if you do this. That, that's their main Fear thing. response causes you not to be able to give fact in, in response, right? And then you have to like, you know, but us, we have to like look at it. Um, you know, it may mention somebody who ran the study and then I want to know who that person is, right? What's their connection to this whole study? Oh, that's a tobacco study guy. Okay, well, it's probably not going to be accurate <laughs> for us, right? Um, so there's a lot of, it, like, like Swag says, there's a ton of effort you have to put into going through and looking at things. Um, but antis don't care because as long as they can get in the article, somebody dying in the word vaping or somebody injured in the word vaping, that's all they care about. That's yeah. all they want to post. We, we need vape myth busters. Oh, that'd be great. That's what we need. Like Adam a full Saturday, on show. We need you, bro. I'm down. Something, man. Adam Savage uh, we, is one of the best. I, I could totally ever. be the Adam Savage of vape myth busters. <laughs> Let's do, do it, it, bro. Do it. It's almost to the point. Super now. eccentric like, like, season. So we need ooh, like a network got... TV show that does Demo, this shit. Imagine uh, right after Demo the could, view. <laughs> yeah. Demo could be uh, <laughs> during the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> If Demo was Jamie too, like cause he could be like bald and just have him grow out the stash a little and bit and twirl it. Hat. Oh my god. Can we, can we get a Photoshop of that? That'd be great. <laughs> the funny thing is, is like we wouldn't even have to do that because all I'd have to do is just change my hat and then I could be Jamie. Oh, there you go. And put some glasses on. And, and I'll be Wooly Willy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know who that is, look it up. <laughs> um, okay, so the, the, the second thing I wanted to talk about um, on today's What's the Scoop is the fact that I didn't know this was happening, and I'm so happy that I learned this from uh, Mr. Scott. So <clears throat> I haven't had the chance to completely go over everything um, in depth like I want to, but I will, and I will also be putting the link down in the description for you guys. Um, basically, they are reopening the comment period for PMTAs. Um, so it's not just, it looks like they, they don't just want you to go in and tell your story and all that. Um, basically it, they just want, it, it, can you give me a little more information on it, Scott? They, they just want more, uh, information on how the PMTAs will affect the, the industry or. So, yeah. So they, so there was, um, a, a, so about a year ago, six months ago, there was an opening uh, for comments on the PMTA and just about the process and things like that. Juice producers would go in and put in their information to like how they're doing it, what's easy for them, hard for them. Of course, the big thing is like the cost, obviously, right? It's like millions of dollars per product. But, um, after the meeting with Trump, like we, I don't know how this originated, but after the meeting with Trump, um, and somebody mentioned that during that, the, the, P PMTA process was really difficult by the FDA during the meeting. And then all of a sudden after the meeting, like this week, they decided to reopen the comment 
uh, section for a couple weeks. So I think we got like, I think it's like 10 to 20 days. Uh, December 16th is the last day. So there's another so 20 16 days. days, 17 days or so. Yeah. Um, so you can go in and comment on it. And, and I mean, um, it's really important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when that closes and I think it's March of next year, like, Basically, all e-liquids that haven't passed PMTA are therefore no longer to be sold. So I think the information that I heard from Charlie was that there was last time they checked there was only uh, 500 or so comments. So um, since the reopening, so make sure you guys go and share um, on there. Make sure you read the des- the description in the link I provide you. And <clears throat> I will be, you know what? I'm gonna do it right now. Um, PMTA. Yeah, Ranger would probably know more about it than I would. Reopen. Okay, so basically, read the link. Make sure you guys read the link. Make sure you understand what they're looking for, and then give it to them. Uh, yeah, Ranger Vapes even says it's uh, it. They reopened it because it's a requirement before any FDA regs can be implemented. Right. Right. So the link is now in the description. If you guys go to the description, you'll be able to grab it there. Um, excuse me. Uh, that is that is the big news, that really important news that I wanted to get out there. Uh, make sure you guys share that around to that link that I put in the description as well as in the chat. Here it is one more time. Bam. There you go. Um, and uh, you guys can share there. So now let's get to... Mr. Black Cat White Face, what are you vaping on, bro? I actually have the exact same RDA that Mr. Stan graciously sent me. An RDA for vaping. This is by Coil Turd. Uh, the interesting thing about this RDA, it has this little metal. Let's see if I can get it up there. Maybe I need a little metal cap here that's Dude. replaceable. You can change it out. Yeah. Depending on the airflow you want. So I have the two set up, and it comes with one that has three, and then one that has one be more like for mouth to lung. Yeah. So I have that, and that's on the top side um, dual. And then, and then, I have some Mont Blanc by Shy Tots, but I also have some um, Turkish cake that's in all here. Right. So I'm, I'm alternating between the two. Where did my drink go? That's, uh, that, that's it. That's it from the news desk. That's all you're vaping? <laughs> that's it from yeah, the news Yeah, I, I don't really, I don't, you know, I, I'm a talent, man. I, I don't bring anything with me. You know I, just, what? I, just I, wanna, here, um, I just come down here and rock the mic. <laughs> there's That's a curiosity within me. Um, you okay. messaged me earlier this morning. I, I'm down with that. That's all I'm, I need to hear. Fuck yeah. What? Sign it, press it, release it. It's done. He's got some Full curiosity. Send, bro. Full send. There was a, oh. uh, a, a message that I received this morning from Mr. Scott. Oh. And uh, basically it said... Hey, I think I'm gonna switch to the two airflow holes. Uh, which one do you use? And I said I use the three. And when he came on right before the show, literally five minutes before the show, he hadn't yet switched to airflow, and I didn't understand it. And he was oh, trying come to on, don't it. shame the man. Shame. He's trying to switch it. Shame. And I said, I said, what are you doing? <laughs> and he goes, Have you guys figured out why this? Like, have you guys had any trouble changing this thing? <laughs> Some bitch is stuck on there good. You want- <laughs> Bro. <laughs> what, was the real problem? <laughs> what was the real problem, bro? You got to unscrew it. The top has got a screw on it. Hey, full disclaimer, Scott. I did the same thing, dude. So you're not hey. the only one, bro. You're not the only one. I just thought it was hilarious because the look on his face when he he's like he's like tugging on it. This is really tough, guys. And he goes like this. Oh. <laughs> I- <laughs> I had the same reaction when I did it too. It pretty much was the same exact scenario that happened to you was with me. I was building it in the uh, the Stu Crew Discord in like our Zoom room and stuff. And of course we're on video like how we are here. I'm sitting here, I'm like, man, how did, I'm like trying to like push it out from the inside, trying yeah. to, man, this thing does not want to come off. And then someone looks at me and is like, dude, it unscrews. I was like, oh. That's <laughs> one of my like review. A- there should be a, there should be a, piece of paper and they're telling me that i actually have the ring around my thumb it's like black and blue where i was like trying to jam my thumb up oh my gosh like, uh, i think I did, I did something similar with the mesh pro like when we just got the mesh pro in i didn't realize that it was a slide open top fill so i'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah then i felt like a total That's how idiot. reviewers break things yeah. um 
real quick question for you, Scott. We had uh, we had uh, Mr. Qualtert on last week. Yeah. And uh, we talked to him a little bit about the RDA for vaping, and then we all got it the very next day. So I'm curious now that you have yours. What do you think? Uh, what are your first impressions right off the top? Flavor is really good. Flavor is really good with three. Um, so it came with coils in it. I'm assuming they're his. Yeah, I, I had him build them. Okay, so um, came with coils in it. Wet coils are fantastic. Um, looks like he's they're 0.08 build. So I'm assuming it's like a nichrome uh, three core alien. Uh, deck <clears throat> is super easy. It looks like airflow on it is real nice with three holes open. The cap locks in easy. I mean, it's a nice RDA. It looks nice. I think yeah, I got the gold one, which I was really happy about. I think it looks really nice, man. I think good flavor. No, no, no problems with me. You know, I, I was curious about the height of it and I found my yeah. goon LP and the damn thing's the same height as the goon LP. That surprises me. I know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Such a, dude, it's such short. an easy to build deck. Hmm. It's a short Addy, bro. Yeah. The goon LP. Really? You dropped the ball. <laughs> The, yeah, right. <laughs> the one thing about it, like I, I, when I saw it, like I wanted to raise the cap up a little bit, and I actually changed. The first thing I did was change the drip tip because the drip tip was just too low. I need to get like my lips off of it a little bit. Yeah. And uh, if, it, if we could raise it up, maybe just like another one of those metal pieces, like stack them so it was a little higher. Yeah, and I did the opposite, Scott, because I took that drip tip off because I thought it was too tall and put one that was shorter on it. <laughs> did you really on the red? Yeah, dude. Oh, I'll switch it back. Let me switch. <laughs> It's like, like the perfect. It likes to press his lips lightly against it. I got yeah, big ass. Like I got big ass smackers, man. Hey, I did too, bro. Smackers. I got big ass smackers. <laughs> Those thick <laughs> jammies. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that Powerful you don't have lips. to adjust anything, man. You don't. It's like you constantly like if you pop your cap off, right, and you go to you know because you want to paint your coils or however you like to do it. Um, you know, you pop it back on, it locks into place, but it's directed directly where it was before. You don't have to slide yeah, it around or anything. You never have to worry like, about your airflow not hitting exactly. the coil. Yeah. Even it's, when you change out the rings, because it directs it directly right. And the, what I, one thing that I love about it so far is like I literally just got mine a couple of days ago too. I think it's like a day or so after you guys got yours, and just how reduced that chamber is. Like, yeah. look at how close that airflow is to your coils. You know what I'm saying? Like the flavor experience on this thing is. Can I make a odd there. statement and say it basically, I think the reason why I like it so much, even just, I mean, I do a lot of high end. Um, those of you that know me, most of you guys watching, you probably know. And so it's like the thing that I really love about high end. One of the major things I really like about high end is how the modder thinks about the designer thinks about utilization of space. Yeah. They, they, everything has a purpose. Every, there's no wasted space on the really good products. Like this product right here. I have two of them, the cycloid, because it's a little mech squonker, right? But the utilization of space, it's so clean. I mean, it's kind of a pain in the ass when you want to take it apart to swap buttons and stuff, but it's like, it's just, they thought every part of it through and that's how I feel about <coughs> this RDA. And as much as he said in the last show, when, uh, when Beecher was on, he was like, we did it in a morning, you know, we, it's like, that's, I mean, that's great that they did that, but they're, they didn't, it's not like they rushed through it. I think I feel like everything was thought through really well and the space utilization is really great. So that's the that's the kind of parallel. I think that's why like when I go after a mass market product or I'm really excited about something and I've been excited about this for a while, um, it's because I see something in it that reminds me of, you know, not being mass produced, you know, China kind of stuff, you know, or <laughs> well, et cetera, here's a, so. I got a question that that um it's kind of brought up from the the first impression video I did because right when I got it, I opened it up on live stream and stuff. And uh, a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but there's a few naysayers that, oh, great, another, uh, what do they say, another pulse or another pulse with a cosmonaut deck or whatever, things like that. And, um, yeah, I see a couple of those things in it, but I'm – I'm curious because I'm pretty sure I know what you guys are going to say already, but how do you feel at those comments? Like, does it make, does the thing perform better than those things? Does it lend itself to those things at all? Like what, what do you think frames? I, me personally, I do see some similarities between different products. Cause like, if you guys know me and you guys watch my channel, then you guys know that the cosmonaut, like the V1 is one of my all time favorite RDAs. Get in front of the mic and, a little bit. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that. That's um, 
but yeah, like the Cosmo is one of my all time favorite RDAs. I love building on it and stuff like that. And then when like the two dropped, I like the fact that they just switched the screws around and stuff like that. And like for me personally, if I were to have designed an RDA, I feel like I probably would have gone down a similar route just because I enjoy that build deck and that style. You know what I'm saying? So like it's something you kind of notice with a lot of people, like especially reviewers when they come out with a the product, they do take cues from certain RDAs that they thoroughly enjoy. And I can see why, you know what I mean? They're gonna, they want to take something that they already enjoy and put their own spin on it. You know what I mean? And you could definitely see that there are some of those influences, but there are definitely some things that he did to this that made it his own. If you know what I'm saying, like when it came down to the way that he did the AFC ring with the reduced chamber and all like there's certain things that he did with it that made it into his own sort of design. But with cues, you know what I mean? So, like inspirations from other yeah. people. And for me, I, dude, I don't better. see a problem with it. You know, I think that's, he did it better, honestly. I, mean, he doesn't, I did like too, he, man. He I've, doesn't hide it. He doesn't hide it either. So it's like no, he, he went he through said the process. It himself. Yeah. He said it himself. He he did what he would want would have wanted to do with a cosmonaut pretty much yeah. you know with that deck style he did what he would would have done you know what i mean and you can see like it's not the exact same because it, that block is more of a square you know what i'm saying and the way that it's split and you know the way that the well is done it's it's different in that certain ways but there is certain similarities like just just the way that it is a postless deck with a block style you know what i'm saying right but right. he did put his own spin to it i think <laughs> personally all right well cool with well, um so Scott, I'm glad you're enjoying that thing. Uh, yeah, thank you, brother. You guys, a couple guests on the show, Frames and Black Cat White Face. You guys have a couple of shows. We got the Green Room that happens before the Stew at 7 p.m. Central um, every Friday night with the Angry Hippie and friends. And then we have every Friday before the Green Room. We have the hot tub on Black Cat White Face's channel, and then throughout the week you have other things like he does a. Uh, why don't you know what? Why don't you give us a little a little background as to the live stream thing has become kind of hot lately, especially like the the commenting show thing. Yeah. And uh, premieres. I'm, what? Commenting show premieres. Sorry, I was just trying to help you out. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm just curious. Why don't you give us? Why don't we go to Black Cat? Just give us a little bit of uh, feedback on. The people that may have not seen your channel, um, what kind of shows you've got throughout the week and what inspired those to be a thing? Yeah, I, you know, I started uh, so but almost uh, two years ago, I started YouTube. Um, I do Monday, I do like a featured, so I, I was a coil builder for a long time and I got a YouTube channel. I don't build so much anymore, but I, I feature builders on Monday. So different builders in the community that I happen to know. Um, I feature their Instagram pages. Um, it's kind of more of a click, kind of a clicky type audience because it's not many people are, you know, not a whole lot of people are into coil building. Uh, so I do that. <clears throat> then on Wednesday, I, I try to stay very routine. Wednesday, I do a review, um, typically a live review of different products like this Wednesday. I'll do this one. Um, and then uh, a lot of times I'll do a show on, on Tuesday. I'll do like a recovery show. Um, in recovery, recovering alcoholics. So I do recovery shows on Tuesday. Um, sometimes just me and uh, Nick Divine and Divine Eighty Three is another coil builder. We do shows on Tuesday together, and then Friday we do the hot tub, which is me and Charlie. And today uh, Stan was on there. We have a bunch of different people on there. Um, just I don't know. We just it, it's a vaping show, but we try to keep it kind of where you just bullshit and have fun and kind of get ready to kick the weekend off type show. Um, I usually like yeah, to get on there and watch the hot tub. Uh, Charlie's uh, funny news makes me laugh. Funny news, is, um, and great. I like to I like to jump in when I'm at work. I like to uh, put on your uh, builder highlight because that's always interesting. I mean, I'm not a builder, and I know I actually know from experience that a lot of stuff that's built for Instagram doesn't really vape. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's just pretty for Instagram photos. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, but it, it's art, man. And the stuff you go over is like most of the people that are really good at it, like really good at it. We've and, done, uh, I, I, how'd you get into that? I, you know, man, I, I, so it, I, originally I was just looking for content and, um, I was doing building tutorials and, um, I just, you know what, I got kind of tired of doing that. So I, I forget who I talked to first. I think Nick. Divine. I was like, hey, man, do you mind if I feature your stuff on my channel? 
and I did it and everybody liked it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start asking people. So I've actually, I featured like you name them. I, I've, I've been lucky enough to feature them and then we give away their coils too. So people can win their coils and stuff like that. Or you can win juice like shy tots, uh, Jane, who's huge in the building community, uh, GI Jane, who is shy tots, who's huge in the building community, um, works with it. And it just kind of took off from there. I, I think I've done maybe a hundred, uh, probably about 115, 120 different builders now. Yeah, no, there's a few um, names that I've seen on your show that hang out in the stew chat, and Jane hangs out in the stew chat as well. Yeah. Uh, shout out yep. for those guys. Have you done for British Eyes only? No. He's no. the guy that I haven't done for the, British Eyes only. He's the guy that does all the big funky the big funky coils that you see. For British like, Eyes only. I like that. <laughs> I like that name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not British. He's from uh he's from Essex originally. Okay. He does the big Hawking coils and he's a big New Jersey. Wait, 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 wait. He hangs out in the stew discord a lot. Yeah, there's one. Um, but uh, wow, yeah, you should, you should check him out, man. He does a lot of cool stuff, uh, Very as well. Cool. Man, there's a lot of really awesome builders. You got uh, Macy from Bam M from Bam Builds. Yeah, and Macy yeah. makes some banging yep. coils, man. Yeah, Holy crap, got, I know Macy. You've got a ton of really good builders. Uh, Sammy in, Nitro, like, Sammy dude, Nitro. you should do like. Uh, speaking of, you should do a, like a female builder week. I, I've done a few females. <laughs> yeah, dude. Why do <laughs> you guys separate by gender? I'm, I'm not, just I, saying, showcase I've it. I've done a few female builders. Absolutely, Jeez. and I, uh, female. you know, female. We're kind Everybody of wrapping pardon it up Nick for, the year. for assuming the gender of every builder that's been spotlighted by uh, Black Cat Whiteface. Proceed. I'm, sorry. I'm just saying, do like a special week. With, never mind. Screw I thought about that. I thought about it's fun because I've thought about doing that. Just picking a week, but it kind of, I don't know. I like to give everybody their own week because they only get really one day and then Friday I give their stuff away. So, um, but yeah, we've done a bunch of different stuff, man. I just try to keep it new, keep it fun. Um, it's a live show, it's an hour. We have a good time, yeah. good chat. I've got a lot of people that have been with me for a long ass time watching. So. I've noticed you've got a very loyal set of yeah, I do. in there that I don't see anywhere else. Like they, you have a loyal set of crew members that jump in there and just give you a hard time. It's hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have fun. What about you frames, man? Where did this, uh, where did this green room and who is this angry hippie that you uh, found out there on the interwebs? Well, Actually, I've got two co-hosts now, if you guys have been tuning in recently. Because, uh, yeah, we do have Sean. But I'll give you the back the backstory of the green room. So the green room just is something that just happened one day. You know, I, like Black Cat was saying, I was looking for content. You know what I mean? Wanted to start, like, a stream of my own on my channel. Because I'd been doing the Omis for, you know, quite a while before that. And this, this show I started before the channel even started. And I was like, you know what? I want to bring something to my channel that I can do, like have my own live show. And I was like, you know what? Why not do like a little hour show, hour and a half show before the stew? You know what I mean? Like the stew is one of the reasons why I even started making content to begin with. Um, is one thing that really got me into the community and into the stew community at that, which is something that I'm thankful for just being a member and a part of such a great community. And I was like, you know what? Let's do like a little warm up show for everybody to, you know, kind of get them in the mood for the vape stew you know like like uh scott was saying something that's a little bit more laid back a little fun you know what i mean we, we sit there we do talk vape and stuff like that but we also you know talk music or movies we have fun games that we play you know to kind of end the show on like a fun note and stuff like that and uh i would start off with just me and i'd bring you know a couple of stooges on you know from chat and stuff like that people i hang out with and sean came on and did the show with me one week and i was like you know what the chemistry that me and him had that one show, I was like, dude, I need to bring you on full time. Like you need to, you know, co-host the show with me. And as things started growing and, you know, the audience started to grow and the show started getting, getting some traction, I reached out to my man Overdrip, AKA Uncle Chris, one of our favorite Canadians to come and join us on the show as my other co-host. So it's, you know, the three of us every Friday getting together and, you know, just having fun, man. Just, you know, talking vape stuff. We have like a new segment that we do at the beginning of the show, which is a kind of a cue we took from the Omis. You know, we had what's in the news with Poon Sauce. So now we do what's in the news with the Angry Hippie, because if you guys didn't know, you can catch Poon Sauce and Mr. Sean Type and the Angry Hippie on Wednesdays for what's in the news with Poon Sauce and the Angry Hippie. And they talk about anything that's happening advocacy wise, you know, what's happening with regulations, anything like that. It's a great place to get informed about certain things that are happening. So we kind of just 
brought that over for like a little segment on our show. And then we've got Overdrip. He's got his thing. He does his Overdrip Pro Tip, which could be something vape related. You know, like he's done one where like, say you get down to the end of a bottle and you just got that last little bit left and you can never quite get it out of, you know, the tip. You know what I'm saying? And you just, you, you, but you don't want to waste it. You don't want to throw it away. Pro Tip, cut like a little hole in the corner of the bottle with like your, your like what your coil snips. And you can literally get every last drop of your juice out. That pro tip. You know, he does like real life stuff. Like he did like a pasta cooking one. And then, you know, we just, we do a lot of fun stuff, man. It's, it's a great show. You know, it's something that I just started off to do on, on my channel and, you know, kind of bring some people over, hang out. And like I said, get prepped up for the stew. Nice. Nice. I actually love the idea that you came up. Well, the green room has many, many, Shit many time. meanings, many meanings, many meanings. Shit time. Um, but I love the fact that the room, like on an actual like like nighttime show or television broadcast, the green room is like where they hang out before yeah. they go out on stage yeah. to the show and everything. And that's exactly that right and it's there more is like really cool. you know laid back. You know, there's yeah. no like stru- you know it's just people hanging out. You know, shooting the shit type deal. So that's you know kind of what we went with. And of course, if you guys know what shed time means, you know, it takes a little bit from that. And also, you know, me and Sean were big green fanatics. So, you know, that kind of played into it as well. You know, like I have quite a few green setups, if you guys didn't know. So yeah, every just, time I kinda, every time I talk about dropping something green, you guys both kind of hit me up. Oh, yeah, dude. Freaking need out. it. Need it. Want it. <laughs> Gotta have it. That's cool, man, dude. I'm I'm glad that it's doing well for you too. That's Frames Janklin Vapor in the uh, in the chat, or I'm sorry, in the description down below. His links there too. Um, those guys provide awesome content whenever the stew's not on. So make sure you guys go check out those. Yeah, you get you guys get a two have. hour show when there's no stew. We we we, we, get, we run a little longer. Just yeah, to yeah, absolutely. Sure they kind give of give you fill guys the gap enough for us. You know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, all right, well, cool. So we did frames we did black cat how about we do nicholas Bissett? what are you vaping on bro oh don't use my government name oh i'm sorry <laughs> i would call um, your dad name but you're not a dad that you know of i have a dad bod if that counts <laughs> killing the game dad bod <laughs> <laughs> um all right so well i mean since everyone's doing it i am also rocking the uh beautiful an rda for vaping oh this thing is so nice and especially on this setup right here it does look pretty um, good, bro. with the what is this thing called the arclis the arclis yeah <laughs> um but yeah it's super matchy because like the airflow section has like a little bit of a gloss finish and then the rest of the barrel is a matte finish and that kind of matches with the top piece right here, like almost perfectly. But anyways, uh, in there, I've got some coil turd coils, of course, because it came pre-built with them. And some boule boulou. Hoo-hoo. And it's delicious. Yeah, I'm not much of a dessert vapor, but that stuff right there is so good. It goes really great with coffee. Uh, it goes just really great just all day. And, I, and honestly, pairing-wise, it goes really great with what I'm actually in my apple juice tonight or one of them, I should say, which is bright, triple B bright. And this has mosaic hops in it. That looks like it's delicious. That it is, is <laughs> dude. It's very hoppy. The and, did uh, that to you, Slacks. Yeah. <laughs> and strong, too. It's 7.8% ABV. Uh, but we'll be talking about more of that on my stream oh. this Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless <laughs> self-promotion. On the Nicholas yeah. Bissett Life channel. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> second setup I have is this weird looking one right here. We've got the Widowmaker RTA on top of this beast of a mod, the Warlock's Hammer from our very own Stooge, Mark Clough. This mm. is the incredible bulk uh, because it's got green interior wires and a green screen. But look how cool that is. It's dope. Incredible bulk. And it's got my logo on the inside. So, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Hand um, painted. Yeah, hand painted by Amy, his wife. Uh, in there, I've got some honeydew strawberry bottles in my bag. It's uh, from... Uh, what's that company? High drip, high drip, honeydew, strawberry, zero milligram. Yes. I'm back on zero. 
And last but not least, uh, Overdrip's favorite setup, this one right here, which is the Freemax Twister kit with a super chipped tip. I dropped hey, it. look. Again. It's got a pass-through capability. How advanced? Uh, it's like the tip is super chipped. It's got a big notch cut out of it there because I dropped it a million times. But I'm just vaping it like just nothing. I don't care. And in there, I've got some zero milligram. Uh, this one right here, strawberry peaches from Fresh Squeeze. This is uh, very good. I love strawberry. I love peach. It's great. And that is what I'm vaping on today. So thank you, Stan. Um, and if you want to check out my, my beer reviews slash pairing, check out my live stream this Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a super chat. What? Thank you very much, wow. True Vapor, for the two pounds. Uh, showing the love for the stew in the chat. Our friend from across the pond, Suck My Mod of Great Britain. Um, thank you very much, good sir, of the vaping misfits over there on the True Vapor talking about uh, mental health issues and vaping as well. So that's pretty Great cool show. Stuff. I was actually on there last week. Were you? Now How'd that go? It was it was cool, man. Um, you know, the, they have a great show going on over there. You know, great place, you know, to go if you ever need just someone to talk to or just to kind of, you know, be around people that may know what's going on and are be in a similar type of situation. Just be around some like minded people that are it's like a safe space. I went on there and, you know, shared a little bit of my story of some things that I've dealt with. You know, I've had like multiple open heart surgeries and, you know, take took a mental toll on me there for a while and you know shared a little bit about that and stuff like that and uh, it, it was it was cool man you know i hadn't talked about a lot of that stuff in a while and uh you know it it brought some emotions back but it also kind of felt good to talk about it and you know let people know like that everybody out there goes through some things and you know sometimes some of us may be going through similar aspects of life or through certain struggles that are similar and we can you know kind of be there for each other and that's just a great place to be for that man Amen. Sorry, I was uh, replying to some fans. <laughs> what timing? <laughs> what that cat, dude? What happened? With oh, that cat! That cat is awesome. It like balances he's on his dick. shoulders every single show. <laughs> he's such a dick. <laughs> he is always yeah. He's just kind of like he does whatever he wants to do. He needs his ass whooped. So like a cat, basically. <laughs> yeah, pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's such a cat. <laughs> yeah. Son of a little bitch. Let's see out here. All right, so here we go. Um, I, I lost where I was. Ah, <laughs> yes, everybody's favorite. Okay, here's everybody's favorite segment coming up. I need to know whether we have this evening a grumpy Nick or a happy Nick. Make sure you oh, put it no. in the chat right now. We're going to take a vape break, and then, uh, yeah, guess do, what? Do, 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 do. That's copyrighted timeline. song, so I hope Stan gets in trouble for this. Don't, don't do that. Don't 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 be mean. Don't, don't be mean. I paid a lot of money for a lot of different music that wouldn't get me copyright struck. <laughs> Dude, slightly off topic, but I actually have still received like multiple copyright strikes. Not like there's copyright strikes are different from like channel strikes community strikes copyright strikes don't get you at an actual like channel strike um but you have to like either give them the money that you make off of that video or you have to change the music or mute it essentially so yeah i'm still getting copyright strikes from travel vlogs that i did like five years ago well, yeah. what happens too, Nick, is this is something that I've noticed too, is people will put their music up there and say it's copyright free and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden later on down the line, they're like, oh, you know what? I changed my mind and then copyright it and then don't say anything to anybody or make it known. And then people end up getting strikes for it. Because... It's actually a really big scam. Um, yeah. They it's do it a lot. Quite a bit. I got hit for one vlog where I actually took three or four different copyrighted songs or I'm sorry, copyright free songs. That were um, <clears throat> free use as long as you put in their information in the bottom. And I linked everything, put their information in, did everything. They took a 15-second clip or 20-second clip out of the middle of like a compilation of songs that I put. And uh, copyright struck me for that. So 
I just got over it. I was like, look, if I I can support like uh I, I bought the, the music that's in the intro, which is awesome. If you guys want, uh, go check out Sean Typhon's We Are Stooges for download. I'll actually find the There's link. There's two and volumes, put, too. There's two volumes. I'll put the link in the description. That is the Be Tenacious track from the We Are Stooges Volume 1. And then um, I, I bought that, and I bought a other couple of songs to go with the bumpers just so that I don't have to deal with that. And then I downloaded the dang... Uh, I made sure that I had all the paperwork. So if they ever copyright strike me, I'll just, just send it off. Yeah. Like, Get off Fun my fact. Phone. Get I off my all, lawn. I use all Sean's music in all my videos. So I don't ever have to worry about that copyright strike. He's like, bro, by all means, dude. It's what yours. about that? Use I wonder if it counts for that free album that Apple like forced onto everyone's iPhones. Remember that? It was like a couple yeah. of years ago. Was that, you, you that was like free for use. Or they just were like, screw you. We're putting this on your phone to yeah. take up. That was like back when the phones came with like 16 gigs of space on them too. Yeah. They're like, here, this is almost a gig's worth of music you don't want. And we're going to make it <laughs> damn sure difficult for you to remove it from your phone. But you, can, you can't use it on your videos. Yeah. Thanks, Apple. All right. So we got everybody talking grumpy. I, I didn't. I, I saw one grumpy. Uh, I saw hey, a happy. Way to set happies. the grumpy mood. Let's find out. Here's the bumper. Bam. Bam. Fingers crossed for a rat black billet box. Tomorrow. You gotta tell me when it's over. Boom! When it's over. It's over. Oh, when it's All over. Right. So <laughs> I don't stand. know. I'm. I can't stand tell stand. whether I'm happy or mad or what. Because today, okay. Today is Black Friday, everyone. If you didn't know that already, <laughs> in America that means everyone goes out shopping at like three in the morning for some strange freaking reason. Because we're Americans and we're stupid and we go out and we think we're getting a great deal by getting TVs and stuff that we don't need. But anyways, I'm going to say grumpy, Nick, just based on that starting. <laughs> so, all right. I've worked three Black Fridays at Best Buy, which is horrible. Uh. Okay. Horrible. So in comparison, working a vape shop Black Friday is nothing. I think this year was probably the first year that I volunteered to get there at 8 a.m. Now, I haven't seen 8 a.m. in, well, probably since my last, like, trip, which was, like, June. So I'm, I'm not a morning person, right? So I get to the, the shop today, and for once, there isn't six cars waiting for us in the parking lot. And I think for the first hour that we were open, we might have done like three hundred dollars. So that's that's kind of a, a positive thing. But then it got busy, and we ended up averaging a little under a thousand bucks an hour. So it was busy. Um. So yeah, I mean, Black Friday for me wasn't terrible. I mean, I, I was tired, yes, but as soon as I got a coffee and an energy drink, I was fine. But overall, not so bad. So I think this is a happy Nick moment. Honestly, I'm <laughs> going to say it. Happy Nick for me right now. Um, I had a good Black Friday, and I'm, I'm still a little tired. But you know what? This is making me feel a lot better, guys. So, Wait, yeah. it has nothing There's to do with that. the fact that you're hanging out with your friends? There's that, too. Just, yeah. just you, Swaggins. Just you. The fact that you showed up makes it all better. Damn. I tried my hardest. I slept my the whole liver? way home. My I'm kidding. All I'm the kidding. driving. I'm, I am thankful for, for our guests. All right. James Franklin, you are a king amongst men. Uh, number one supporter of the stew and just the vape industry in general. Jeez. And Dude, I remember back in the day, you used to call me the biggest vape cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, and you still are. You still are. And uh, Scott, you're just a ham handsome devil. I know. <laughs> Young Spy Santa. <laughs> that was uh, the best. That was the best answer to that. You're I a handsome know. devil. I like your uh, your subtle accent. And uh, yeah, I would S the D. Dang. <laughs> hey, hey now. I'm so getting late tonight. After I heard it here show, first, guys. Oh, there so it is. So, so after the show. Nick, 
you are in a good mood. Look at you. You're like giving people compliments and stuff, and, and <laughs> you're awake and wide eyed and bushy. It's quite. It's quite the follow up to Grumpy Nick. Did you? Right? Yeah, I have a little like bit of emotional there. whiplash. I, I kind of need like my safety blanket for a second. I'm, I'm in a good mood right now. Let's put it that way. Did you get like? <laughs> did you get a phone number? Did you get the digits today at the at the shop or what? What happened, man? Something else happened besides just a decent Black Friday. What What else happened to you? <laughs> I, I got a case of beer that's like really rare and sought after. Oh, is it like a treasure chest of beer? It's a treasure Pretty trove. Much. <laughs> just just wait till my next one. Oh my god, I can't wait. <laughs> Stuff is so oh, good. All right, all right. Well, we uh, we now are getting to the point uh, that I don't have a bumper for. So what I'm going to do is wait a second, and we haven't really even like hashed out the new name for this segment this is the placeholder name for this segment oh no i just it, i'm going to emails that's what i'm going to yeah we're doing we're doing uh on the see, script it's called viewer mail that's because i couldn't think of anything else to call Yeah, it exactly we haven't hashed that out yet that's what i was saying <laughs> listen i was listening i was just trying not to say that <laughs> <laughs> wait what the hell was that what do you mean what what happened Something broke. That's another reason why I like the cycloid because uh, it's made out of Delrin. Ah. <laughs> you dropped your cycloid? I have two of them. <laughs> All right. Hold on a second. It's not like it's a mech or anything. Okay. So we have, bam, we have a few emails. <sighs> from last week that came through during the show. If you have emails or shout outs or anything that you want to send to us, go ahead, vapestew at gmail.com. We Do got it. a few. Um, oh, here's a show question. And this looks like it could be a this or that, but we're going to answer it right now. This one's from Dale. Um, Dale? Would oh, you man. rather be limited to tobacco menthol liquid or limited to cardo tanks and sigalikes? Interesting this is mean. question. This is a mean question. Dude, for people in Massachusetts, it's really I mean. missed the question completely. It says, would you rather be limited to tobacco slash menthol liquid or limited to cardo tanks and sigalikes? So basically, you could have your strawberry liquids and things like that, but you would have to be Easy answer. Cardos and sigalikes. What is it then? Well, go for it then, Mr. Easy Answer. Have my flavors and my cardos and sigalikes because guess what? I have thousands of dollars worth of other shit. I'll just break those things open and pour the juice in them. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's pretend like you don't. Oh, okay. Then um, let's pretend like you know what you like. You have one setup. Same answer. Same answer. Okay. Anybody else have a, have an answer for that? What about you, James? Oh, man, this is tough, bro. This is tough. Um, So it's either menthol or tobacco liquids or sigalikes and pods. Is that what we're is that straight what tobacco? Is? Are you going to be like lung vaping straight tobacco? The thing no, it. right. <laughs> I'm probably I'll probably going to end up going the Cardos, bro, just because I need the flavors. Cardos I, up. I, I can't I I can't vape tobacco now as it is. Dude, 12 milligram, you know, of your favorite juice profile Yeah, dude. I'm in down. a Cardo style dude, atomizer. Right here. This is dude, all I need. 12, 12 milligram, milligram 12 milligram vanilla custard for my man Overdrip, and I'm set for life. <laughs> but not I'm everybody good. has, not everybody has, has that kind of thing where they have a friend who mixes juice and stuff. So no, so, I, well, I'm just saying, like, if I could get like a 12 milligram of like one of my favorite flavors, you can still buy it. Cardo, you can still buy the flavor. Be good. That's the so whole you're point. saying Cardos and Sigalikes? Yeah, because I'd have to have the flavors, man. I couldn't do the tobacco or just menthol. Like, I, I, I can't vape either one of those anymore, anyways, because it reminds me so much of cigarettes. Because I was a menthol tobacco smoker, yeah, obviously. So it's I just like too. I can't do them anymore. That's the reason why I, I go towards the flavors is because it gets me away from that, you know. What about you, uh, Black Cat? Uh, cigarettes. Cigarettes. <laughs> <are awesome. laughs> Damn. Hey, honesty I, is honesty, bro. You know, man. It, honestly, like it, it, if it gets taken or that's our option, I'd probably go to the cigarette light, but I'd really try to quit. I'd really yeah. try to quit everything because, um, 
the hobby side of this and the different juices that I try are what really keep me interested in doing it. The different RDAs, um, the different devices are what really keep me doing it. And if you're going to limit it to just a Sigalite, where there's no hobby side to it at all, um, it's going to be hard. So I, I probably would would really start like tempering off to just quit completely. Because yeah. I think once you take it, like for me, like I'm addicted to nicotine, obviously. I, I love nicotine, but I'm not as addicted to it now as I was. I'm not as addicted to this as I was to cigarettes. Like oh, yeah. not even fucking that. close. Like I can go, like I don't panic when I leave my house and my vape's not in my car. Like I used to panic if I like left my lighter inside, I, would, I have to get out and run inside and grab it. Like, yeah. so I, I think I'd probably work to quit ultimately, but I'd go with cigalites until then. <laughs> something with some kind of flavor, I guess. What about you, Mr. Daily Vape TV? I mean, I, I'd go for cigalites too. That's where I started. And uh, if I have to go full circle then and still get my flavors, then that's what it's going to be. Um, tobacco. Tobacco flavors in general are pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're nothing like a tobacco cigarette. There's absolutely no flavor out there. I'm saying this right now for a fact. There is no flavor like a burning tobacco cigarette. None. Doesn't happen. Um, they started in China, really. I mean, if you think about it, like the DK555 and the RY4 are like the most quintessential like tobacco flavors. And those started in China after Chinese cigarette brands, which we didn't even have over here. So and, and like the rest of the tobacco vapes that we get nowadays are either nuanced tobacco and yeah, including they're, honey they're and vanilla and caramel and that kind of thing. Or they're bad. <laughs> so i'm gonna go with cardos i i actually started with a dripping atomizer the original dripping atomizer a bridgeless cardamizer that was basically just like a conical kind of like heating element of some sort i don't even know what kind it was and you just drip like seven drops at a time and then puff on it if you dripped eight drops then it would leak everywhere and it would be <laughs> terrible so i, I would go back to that because that was the original dripping for me. So that's why they call it a drip tip, everybody. Just to let you know, that's why they call it a drip tip. The more you know. Do, 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 do. <laughs> hmm. And don't take my word for it. Honestly, um, I just learned a shit ton. Thank you. I, I probably would go back to uh, Sigalikes and Cardo Tanks. Uh, I would be on the fence. I'd be with, uh, with Black Cat probably where I would be fighting it. Um, probably be fighting it to want to go back to smoking. Um, I went to sub ohm and went to building as fast as I could so that I could get that, that dense vapor that, that actually kept me vaping. Um, Cardo's never did it. And it took a while for me to actually figure out how to build on like say like little mouth to lung things and stuff to get that kind of dense vapor that I want, even though it is a mouth to lung vape. Uh, it took me a while to figure it out with, with mass and, and what kind of wire and what kind of builds. And, you know, it took me a long time to figure it out how to vape on a smaller device and get the, the vape that was going to be satisfying for me. I could probably do it if I had to go back to Cardo's and Sigalikes. Um, However, it would be hard. It'd be really hard. I could not go back to smoking. I could not go back to just tobacco flavors. Uh, the, those they're so nasty, and they're it so. Would. It's it's like if you're gonna have to only vape tobacco, it's so bad. Why not just smoke? And then that's terrible too. Um, yeah, like but right here, be... Dane Bentley said something in chat. Um, he, he said, "I heard someone say re recently that vaping tobacco flavors for us is like recommending alcoholics being forced to drink only Becks or Old Duels or nothing." Yeah, and dude, it's I totally get that, bro. It's pretty much exactly what you said right there. It's like forcing us from people that have tried to get away from a substance to only vape something that tastes like that substance. You know what I mean? It's just like that seems counterintuitive or yeah. counterproductive if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
Well, who was it that was like, oh, no, it was uh, Cuomo, wasn't it? That was like, well, if you can't have flavors, why wouldn't you? No, no, it was the Surgeon General. That's who it was. He tweeted, well, if if you don't have flavors, then why would you go back to smoking instead of just trying tobacco? And it's all the vapors are like, we tried it. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're using the flavors that we use, because all the tobacco flavors sucked. Here's another uh, another email that came. I don't know who this came from. Um, there's not a name. It's just a bunch of numbers, and then it says gorillamail.com. So, uh, and the English. It's probably one of our uh, one of our non English as, as a first language kind of countries. But the email goes: What your thoughts of being? What are your thoughts of people getting bad quality RTAs from China? When some reviewers bring them out, no one ever emails you back at all. They ignore all your mail. What can you do about it? Thanks. Anybody have an opinion? I have an opinion, but I so, certainly. So their question is: is like so, so someone comes out with an RDA or an RTA it comes out. There's some sort of issue with it. You try to contact them, and they just don't contact you about back about it. Is yeah, that, basically, basically. Um, they say no one ever emails you back. Like, I guess they're emailing the, the reviewer as well as the company. Yeah. Um, and all the emails are ignored. What can you do about it? Thanks. So that's kind of what the email says. Well, I could say if we're talking about, I'm going to segregate mass market and high end because high end is more personal, but this is, this specifically says China. Oh, China with China, dude. I think I think we could probably all agree here that I mean, think about similarly like a big company like Apple or Verizon. You know, do you ever get in touch directly with the people you know responsible for the product? No. Um, you may get a customer service rep, or you may not. But with China, traditionally, it's I mean, it's been an issue. I think that people had an issue with Watofo, right? And then that happened recently with uh, with an RDA, not not just the uh, the warrior, but another one where people were trying to contact with Tofo because their orders weren't coming in. They pre-ordered something. What was it? I don't know, but I, I think I remember. You get what like that I'm saying, like they didn't get a response yeah. back. And it's like you go through the means you can go through. But at the end of the day, you know. Here's my here's my opinion. Okay. That's why um, you're getting it for $30, a $30 RTA. It's like it's almost like yeah. a throwaway to China and it has to be a throwaway to you. Here's my opinion on Please. it. Okay. I'm not the manufacturer. Um if you email me about an issue, I will usually try my best to like get it through and make sure that they answer. Um <clears throat> I also talk to the manufacturer directly and say, hey, make sure you guys are on top of this. If I'm going to be doing a product review, I want to make sure that you guys are returning emails and stuff for issues. Um, but all you can do is contact the company. That's pretty much the only thing you can do is contact the company. Um, I will tell you that you usually get a better response if you contact them on more than one platform. Uh Email usually like if you're trying to get a hold of a Chinese company, they will answer one of a few different platforms. They'll usually answer um, either Instagram message, message, email. Um, they'll usually answer Facebook messages, uh, things like that. Um, sometimes they'll answer one and not the other. Sometimes different companies will answer different ones. But if you message them on all three, you're getting at least more chances for them to answer you. Uh, they just don't have the same – that culture just doesn't have the right. same um, social kind of customer service thing is really important to them as it is to us or as it is to some parts of the world, uh, unfortunately. And that's, that's, that's really all you can do is contact them and keep contacting them and, uh, you know, show your support with the money that you spend – I think yeah. I think ultimately, so here's your here here's your choices. Uh, if you bought it from a vape shop, you can go back there. Maybe you're not yeah. using it right, and they can show you something different about it, and it can help you. Um, watch the reviews, see if you're if you're not doing something right. Don't contact the guy who created them because they're not going <laughs> to respond to you. They unless don't you're like, Unless you have a relationship with them, maybe you have a relationship with them, and you can contact them and be like, hey, 
about this RDA? Can you tell me like what the hell's going on with it? You contact a Chinese company, they're going to get back to you on Chinese time, which means they're probably not going to get back to you. Yeah. They're also like a day ahead of us. They're in a yeah. whole different world. They're like and, a day ahead of us. They have twice as many holidays that are twice as long as we do. But uh, Black Hat hit the nail on the head. I mean, I we didn't, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, it's like you got to do a little bit of research. Like go to right. YouTube and type it in and see, make sure that you're using it properly. Exactly. Like if I if I didn't know these guys and I couldn't get that fucking cap off, yeah. I would have watched the review on it. Yeah. <laughs> like how the fuck do I get this cap off? Yeah. yeah. But uh, I think ultimately what the 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 risks that you take when you buy something that is produced in china mass produced not in not in a high end yeah. is that your customer sub, customer service is not going to be that great um if it's like a 200 hundred dollar item then then you have a right to get the yeah. customer service you deserve you pay what you get and you, i hate to you know, say that but that's but even economics. still like you have chinese company making really expensive stuff so another good point that you made uh scott was go to like i'll use an example i got a double barrel and it started to like tweak out on me, you know, my, my chip. And I bought it through Vape Wild and I contacted them. They literally, I sent them screenshots and whatnot. I sent it to them. They checked it out and through the travel or whatever, it wasn't, it was, it was working perfectly fine for them. And so they were like, it's fine, whatever. They, they sent it back to me and they gave me a, like a bunch of free juice with it for the inconvenience or whatever, even though they found nothing wrong with it. Um, so like sometimes you'll have good good experiences like that, but that's also another way too. Like if you contact the distributor that you bought it from, you know that's usually your first line of defense for customer service because they're the ones that want you to come back and buy products from them. They're getting it from manufacturers. You're never really going to contact. That's almost like you know the whole jewel thing. You know, it's like you're blaming the product that was made by somebody, designed by somebody. You know, you're not going to contact that person. It's just, it's not right. You know, right. You, it's not appropriate. You don't contact that person for someone using it irresponsibly or et cetera, not knowing, knowing how to use it. You contact the person you bought it from. There's also a, a distinguishing factor um, of <clears throat> where you bought it from. Uh, you don't have to necessarily contact the manufacturer. If the manufacturer's not getting a hold of you or whatever, you can contact the company you bought it from. And yeah. um, like Labor if somebody DNA bought something from me, if it's something that messed up during normal use or they used it and they messed it up or something like that, I'll usually get them in contact with the manufacturer. I'll make sure they yeah. get in contact with the manufacturer so they can get the parts or whatever. But if I sold you through my website, if I sold you a bunk product, I'm going to take care of it for you. That's that's how that's how the company that sells those things should do. Um, so there's a difference. Like if you've got an issue with like say say you messed up the top cap on your Dreamer and you need a new one. I'm not going to have those parts. Like that's not something I'm going to be able to help you with. Um, like if you put a wrench on it or something and you screwed it up, I can't do anything about that. Um, however, if I sold you a dreamer and it didn't have threads in the top cap, I'm going to replace it for you. I'm going to replace it with a whole new dreamer. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can't just send you a new top cap or a new dreamer because you put a wrench on it. So you kind of have to, I would contact the manufacturer, contact the company you bought it from and, if nobody if nobody takes care of you or nobody understands or nobody helps you out, um, being that you're being reasonable because there are unreasonable people out there, if nobody helps you out, then you need to make the decision whether or not you want to use your, spend your money there again. Uh, that's I guess. I mean, that, unfortunately, that's, that's, that's comes just down the to it. That's the only right? thing you can really do. Yeah, I yeah. do have to shout out, you know, smoke or smock, depending on how you <laughs> pronounce it. Smoke tech because they set up the, uh, a way that you can actually get in contact with an American um, distributor, official like retailer. Um, what is it, Mad Vapes? I think in like Virginia or something, where you can send your stuff back there and they'll actually <clears throat> replace it. So nice. they they actually have been stepping up their game a little That's bit. Awesome. I mean, that they make awesome. a crap product. I'll say that they they make an absolute garbage product, well, but they're at least trying with their warranty service. That's they make made a cheap Infinix. product. They make a very yeah. affordable, cheap product, and because Crap. of that, you're going to get that type of quality. The Alien Two Twenty kit was the last like decent, you know, I think kit that they made. But gonna, but I will B. say I had that. Yeah. On on the flip side though, like something like Desire Designs that not only will not respond to you not get back to you they just straight up do not warranty their stuff they'll blame the user 
yeah for what they do i mean i'm sure a, a f- few of you guys not only watching but i'm pretty sure james you had a bad experience with that i've dealt with desire and it was not a fun time oh yeah desire desire really screwed that up didn't they with with the rage the first batch of rages they had a ultimate shit show with and they did terrible when it came down to the customer service aspect of it I actually now, had to go through Dwayne himself. Yeah, Dwayne replaced me. Dwayne replaced almost every single one of the first batch yeah. rages by himself on it. his own dime. He probably yep. didn't make oh, a dime geez. off that project. Honestly. Shout out to Dwayne. Yeah, <laughs> huge shout out to Dwayne. His customer service is on point. Absolutely. Right. Um, okay, Always so has been. Let's get on to the next one. We got two more emails. Um, the next one is from our very own, I believe he's watching now, Bob Ellis. He says, hi, Stan, why no black stainless steel keen stack piece? Um, because I, they didn't make it. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, I can always recommend colors and stuff to them, but ultimately manufacturing's on their dime. They can make whatever they want. They're going to make whatever they want, and they can tell me, yeah, we're not going to make that color. Can we uh, start a GoFundMe for Stan to just buy out Times Vape in China? <laughs> That would be uh, that would be pretty incredible, actually. Um, Need to make that happen, dude. I would set up like a whole freaking. I would do the same thing as Smoke, where I would set up like a whole hub in the U.S., but all manufacturing and everything. The company would be based in China. Get you then, a couple of five axes. Yeah, machine. bro. Yeah, bro. That'd be yeah. that'd be awesome. And then yeah. I'd go straight to a, a secret Facebook group where you could only get stand designs through Facebook. <laughs> Of course you would, you high end piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from M. Gunther. He says, So much talk today with banning of flavors in menthol or no menthol. Why did we not hear any discussions on limiting salts to 20 or 25 milligram to eliminate the head rush these teens are seeking? Thoughts? Thanks, guys. Um, why do you think nobody's talking about? It seems to be a secondary issue limiting the milligrams. Like, that's not the big thing. It's all about flavors. Why do you think that is? Because none of it makes sense. That's why. Yeah. Because it's not about health. It's about money. Absolutely. Right. It's not about. It's, about, it's, it's not, not, not about, about addiction because they want the addiction. It's not about solving a problem. Man. They'll keep you on 50 milligram. They, it's not they, about they, solving I bet you they'd problem, rather be 50 it. milligram or 50 milligram. They're not trying to. They're not trying to find the solution to this. Yeah. And because there's speak- nothing to find the solution to they're yeah. trying to get rid of it yeah. speaking of actually jewel is petitioning europe to like relax their laws for them why they're so Let's yeah, not they want they're like people. a parasite they dude they products. literally are a parasite they're trying to get into these countries and like multiply dominate and destroy I'm going they to say the McDonald's. this. They are the McDonald's of the vaping industry. We need yeah. a, a meme of a face hugger jewel. <laughs> I'm going to say this one time. Yeah, I'm right. Leave it alone because I don't want to talk about jewel anymore. It's a big jewel. <laughs> big vape pave doesn't exist. No. Big tobacco exists, and jewel is big tobacco. You can have them. They're big tobacco. Keep them. Keep there's them. Uh, there's a new Netflix them. movie out. Uh, I saw Chris from Empire Vapes, uh, M- Empire Vape Co. post about it today. He said there's a, a movie on Netflix called uh, I forget something about Big Vape though. You might want to check it out. Yeah, it's called Broken. There it's you go. It's a show. There's two. Yeah, there's show. Broken, and then there's um, there's another one, oh, uh, Miracle or something. It's like a I don't know, but yeah, there's two of them right now. Anyway, on the uh, positive side, Steven Maldonado's got us started with his dollar ninety nine. He says towards buying Times Vape. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. <laughs> I'll put it in the fund. I appreciate it, brother. <laughs> All We're right. almost there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wonder how much you would actually vape, take. No, I wasn't taking a dig. It was a, just a joke. Come on. I wonder how much you would actually take. What do you guys think? What do you guys think it would take? The buy times vape? one million dollars. One million. <laughs> Swags, what are you vaping on, bro? Oh hey, what's going on? Um, I'm so tired now. It's like I'm here, so you don't have to be. I cut I cut my buffet down significantly, so I don't have to go through all of it. <laughs> I first of all, I've got the um, 
the EDC uh, L Thunder Cosmonaut uh, District Five Tact Five uh, edition uh, set up right here, and it's jamming. Um, and I broke that out because my friends over at Rescued uh, sent me some stuff, and oh, that's I the vaped best it. One. I vaped it in Houston. Loved every one of them. Was just so oversaturated with things that I bought. Didn't pick any up. It was a mistake. But now I have it. This is Velez by Rescued E-Liquid. It's a blackberry cornbread uh, pudding, and it's delicious. Um, I actually was having a conversation with James before the show. I was like, I don't know which one, Ben or Velez, and that we were like taking an account of how many fruits I was vaping and how many bakeries I was vaping. And I yeah. was like, all right, we're you gotta it was wait even. Out, so you I was like, let's even. let's go. With, it was like when you're playing war with cards. Then you have a war on a war, and you're like, oh, shit, I'm running out of cards. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, next I've got the MMK by Vape Workstadt. Um, uh, it's a silver-coated bra- – uh, no, copper. And I've got the R- RDA for vaping and RDA for vaping because you always put and before an acronym. <laughs> um, I found that out, and I'm going to keep saying it because it's just glorious, a glorious fact. Uh, it's it's awesome. It's so good, and I'm I love this mod, and I'm really enjoying this Addy. So I'm glad they're together. Inside of that, I've got Boule Bolu, which I would have never tried if he didn't wasn't gracious enough. He being the man himself, Beecher uh, Coil Turd. If he hadn't sent it, so thank you, Coil Turd, because it's delicious, really delicious. Like I was reluctant to try banana flavor because banana candy is not my thing. I like bananas, but I don't like banana candy. So um, it's not a banana candy. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and last, I got the Cycloid that I dropped that is completely 100% fine. The people that live below me probably are not fine, but I don't really care. <laughs> uh, and on top of that, I've got the Jenna, the DLC Jenna, and I just love that RDA. Uh, I really, really enjoy it. Um, a flavor banger for sure. And inside of that, I have Pango by Transistor, a, pa- uh, Pango, a Pangerine. A tangerine, yeah. A tangerine. It's a mango pineapple, and it is freaking delicious. Almost done with my second 120. You know what I just realized, Swags? We're almost vaping all the same liquids, except for our rescues are different. Oh. Well, would you look at that? Things are all things are even, Steve. Hashtag Wonder Twins, bro. Hashtag on other coasts. Um, and that's what I got. So thanks, Stan. I got yelled at in the chat. By uh, one of our awesome moderators, Mr. Oh My Lanta. Thank you very much, Oh My Lanta. He said, Stan, I sent an email. Read it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let me jump back to that real quick before we move on to our next segment. He says, Oh My Lanta. He says, what are the panel's thoughts on vape gear being sold on apps like Wish? My thoughts? Shut them down. That's what he said in big capital letters. Um, let's, hear what, let's hear what Black Cat has to say. What do you think? I didn't know, uh, I didn't know that was happening. Yeah, yeah. Wish and all kinds. Of, I mean, it, it's only going to come back to bite us ultimately. If a kid gets a hold of it, then it'll be the industry's fault for putting him on Wish. I'm, um, fuck, I don't know. Uh, it, it's I best know. just to go away, right? I mean, yeah, you know, I, ultimately, like part of me thinks that it's like, yeah, it'd be best for the industry for all that to go away and have like point of sale access like only in vape shops and nowhere else <laughs> and then part of me thinks that like having more access to it it should be as available as cigarettes and having as much access to it as you possibly can is good for the health of the nation because absolutely it's an opportunity to just get or stay off of cigarettes right. so i mean that's a common sense answer right but unfortunately yeah. there's no common sense in this at all so yeah i mean it, it's got the point of sale has got to be limited I mean, price takes, it needs to get out of, I mean, they're going to have to get it out of convenience stores, stop and goes. It's going to have to get, I mean, online sales are going to have to be, they do have a pretty good system now, right? Where they can do the online sales, but it's going to have to be limited. It's pretty tough. Um, if you don't have your stuff in a row, it's pretty tough to purchase from yeah. my site. Um, and I do that. Like, I make sure that it's tough for a reason. Like, I make sure everybody has their, I don't ship to anybody that doesn't have their, um, their address is regu- re- registered to their card, um, which stinks for some people. But unfortunately, I have to to stay legally, you know, I, to not be one of those people that, that ends up selling to kids. Um, 
Uh, Nobody's... I have the age verification software that I pay a lot of money for to make sure that they run everything. Um, unfortunately, they also block the banned states. So if you're a banned state, you can't purchase from the site. <clears throat> but again, I got to stay legal. So I've always been of the mindset that the tools are there. You have to spend money on them. But the tools are there for websites to be pretty good at making sure that the wrong people aren't purchasing. Mm. Right. Um, and I think that limiting to vape shops only limiting to vape shops only in online sales that are actually abiding by rules and may make sure that they are. Um, hell, I'd be OK with a secret shopper trying to purchase from the site, things like that. You know, I'm OK with that. Make sure that they're they're actually up to snuff um and those kinds of things as, as far as like apps and stuff <laughs> i don't think they have any kind of business selling vape gear um i don't think c stores should be selling anything uh well hell i think c stores c store should be held accountable for checking ids man honestly if they would just do their damn job we wouldn't have such an issue right I mean, am I wrong saying that? What oh. kind of stores? Like corner stores, uh, gas stations. Oh. Um, but point of sale is totally what it should have been. Jewel ruined it. You know, I'll be honest. Let's call out the real criminal here. The kids that got caught. Like, because they couldn't just keep their shit together, like us when we were kids and we were, like, <laughs> you know, trying to hide shit. You know, they ruined it for freaking everybody. Yeah. You There's always kids. that one, man. <laughs> the funny thing about it is like when I got caught doing everything as a child, whether it was drinking or smoking <laughs> or whatever, like they didn't call Marlboro. They didn't call camel and get yeah. mad at them. It was my fault. It was your fault. I'm calling the president. I can't believe they didn't my call Budweiser and be like, they didn't call little Kings or mad dog or yeah. St. Ives and yell at mad them. Dog, bro. Mad dog. You know why? Because it was your fault. And your parents taught you that it was your fault. They taught you that you weren't supposed to be doing that, and they held yeah. you accountable because they yeah. set that rule, and that was how it should be. These parents today don't set those rules. They wait till something happens, and then they freak out, and they go. They call. Oh. They call the child discipline helpline instead of trying to do it themselves, and then they get a robot that gives them a rolodex of things to do or people to call, and they always yeah. choose the president for some reason. <laughs> The whole well, the, parents just want to be friends nowadays. Yeah, and not be you know. You, you know be, what? That's I, a, you need that, to not be if you're your kid's friend. Your kid's peers. at a young age. That's not. What yeah, you're, you're not cool. <laughs> that's yeah. an argument we have in my household between my wife and I. Um, I'm not going to get into super details or anything, but um, you know, I I've said it multiple times. Look, we're we're not we're not his friend. We're his parents. You know, and I tell my son that too. I tell him, I'm like, look. I love to like do things with you and have fun and I want to be friendly with you and I will be friendly. But when you do stuff, I have to be your dad. Like you can't joke with me. I'm going to get serious. You be respectful and you're going to listen. Like this is, this is how it needs to go. I'm not yeah. joking right now. I'm not your buddy right now. You're in trouble. And this is why. And, and I, I don't know why people are so scared to do that. Like why yeah, that's how so my dad to was. take that stance, huh? Spare the rod, spoil the child. That's how my dad was growing up, you know? Like he he enjoyed doing stuff with us and you know having fun and you know having that, you know, type of relationship, but at the end of the day he was our father and we had to show him respect. You know what I mean? And when we didn't, he let us know, you know what I mean? And it wasn't until, you know, we've gotten older and we got into that adult age to where we're able to make our own decisions where that father you know, relationship kind of turned more into a friendship because, you know, at that point, you know, we're, you know, making our own decisions, kind of doing us. But at the same time, he still has that, that he's still that father figure to me. You know what I mean? Like I still show him that respect, but at the same time, as I've grown, we've developed that friendship as, you know, I've matured, you know what I mean? He, as he's seen that maturity happen with me, that friendship has grown, you know, more compared to it being a father son thing to where it's more of like a, you know friend thing but i think like you're saying sam when, when you are got a younger kid you've got to be their parent first yeah you know what i mean you've got to be able to tell them what's right from wrong and help steer them down the right path and not just be like oh it's okay buddy you know people make mistakes yeah no like 
sometimes you got to put the law down. You know what I mean? You got to tell them where, because if it wasn't for my dad setting me straight all those times when I was a kid, who knows where the hell I would be right now? Because I'll tell you what, I did a lot of stupid stuff when I was a kid that, you know, if it wasn't for my dad sitting me down and having certain conversations with me and laying things out and saying like, hey, this is how it is. If you don't do it a certain way, this is what's going to happen. These are the consequences then I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys. For all I know, I could be out on the street somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes sometimes it doesn't even take being like being like all... You don't have to be mean or you like yeah, stern like, either. I, you know what I mean? The biggest thing I always remember that my father told me one time, sat me down, and he was like, wow. he's like, look, and, and this is cliche as hell, but he sat me down on the edge of my bed, and he was talking, and he was 100% serious, and he dropped his head, and he was talking to me. He's like, look, man, I'm not mad at you. Like, you're gonna do dumb shit sometimes. He's like, I'm, I just, I can't believe you do something like that. I'm dis, I'm like extremely disappointed. Like, I, and isn't that so much worse? I don't know. Them being disappointed what to do you? about it. I used to get the belt. I didn't want to talk well, to I my too yeah. during certain. My things. mom would be oh, the dude. disciplined person, and she yeah. would spank me. But if I was really bad, then my dad would have to do it. And that was when I would run yeah. into my room and grab the pull-ups and try to stuff them in my pants. So that I wouldn't. <laughs> and that was the worst too, Swags. So like for me, my dad was a military man so like he was in in the national guard so there'd be times where he'd be gone for a period of time you know what i mean and throughout that entire period of time i'd be doing stuff that would be pissing my mom off and it would just be accumulating and accumulating and all i knew is like a couple days before my dad i knew my dad would be coming home i'd be freaking out because i knew once he got home i was gonna get it bro Absolutely. or she go, she I, go I called your obnoxious. dad at work I called oh she's like oh work. don't worry i'm gonna tell your dad about this when he gets home <laughs> Oh man, dude. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Um I saw your comment Shadow Link. I just can't get into Pave. I can't get into it, man. It'll piss me off too bad. Fuck that. But right now we're going to have a little fun because you know what? <laughs> Knowledge is power. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. This is a graphic song. Are we doing a segment? Yeah, this is, that's that. Oh. Jack. Did it, did it go yet? It's time for Swaggins. That's a fact, Jack. Oh, shit. That's a fact. <laughs> All right, what's That's my fact? Cool what's find the it? fact this week, up. brother? I have too many tabs up because you told me to get news. You were just like, dude, get news. You didn't say Hold specific news. You're just like news. And so then I, I didn't use what you news. sent me. Can I just say that that picture of you and that bumper Swags is like my favorite, bro? <laughs> That was when I was pointing at the van, the stooge, the yeah, stooge dude, mobile, that's the booty I, squad I knew exactly van. where that was from, dude. As soon as I seen it, it like brought back all those. That was the booty bro. squad van, man. Yeah, dude. Booty squad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. I have a fact for everybody today. Um, and I want to share it with you. It's uh, hopefully very thought provoking, um, but otherwise educational. Uh, so basically I want to tell you all that yawning, it has been discovered yawning cools your brain. What? Yeah, I'll explain. Research conducted at the University of Vienna suggests that yawning may play an essential role in cu- cooling our brains. But yawning to cool the brain is not functional when the outside temperature is as hot as the body, explained the study's lead author, Jorg Masson. And if you're wondering, yes, sleep deprivation does increase brain temperature, which could be a factor in why we yawn more when we are tired. That's interesting. Weird. That's a fact. You're sure. That's a fact. <laughs> I think I might be infected by the uh, the disease because my brain's refe- uh, rejecting the factoid you just gave me. <laughs> Where did right. I go wrong in life that I don't get to study things like that? Like literally, that would be the best job ever. You just sit yeah. around stoned all day. You'd be like, I fucking yawn a lot. <laughs> I wonder Damn, if it's because my brain's hot. My brain is super <laughs> that laser hot. Super hot. <laughs> Dude, those are the types of thoughts you have super. after a long so what, my ears are hot? Time, something, you know? like, something's not right. I'm going to look into this. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be somewhere in Europe did that study. That's not here, is it? Yeah, it was. No, it was the University of Vienna. Oh, yeah. Dude. Fucking Vienna. Shed time. Shed time. <laughs> the lead <laughs> author's name is Mo- uh, Morg Masson. Morg? I know a Morg. I'm guessing Morg is very good at video games as well. He is, yeah. as a matter Probably. of fact. Probably. Morg plays a lot of video games, <laughs> smokes a lot of dope. <laughs> All right. Well, spends a lot of time in the shed. 
<laughs> All right, so let's do a buffet right quick. I got the Warlock's Hammer with the infamous Warlock's Hammer on the front um, by uh, the Gathering Vapor Lounge with the dang RDA on top. Solid combo. Inside that, Solid combo. I am rocking Paramon because <laughs> Paramon, duh. And then I got the custom Tenacious TX Vapes parallel box uh, ooh, with the <laughs> RDA for vaping from Coil Turd on top of that. And inside that, I'm rocking Boule Bolu, which I'm the same swags, not a candy, candy banana vapor, not a banana vapor. This stuff is freaking killer, bro. It's, <laughs> like, it's awesome, dude. It's freaking killer. And the flavor on, on it on this is just insane. I'm uh, very, very thoroughly enjoying it. Also, Vaptasia Strawberry is on the Keen stack. I got a custom-coated copper Keen with the copper black coated stack oh, that's section. sexy as hell. And the Asgard <laughs> on top. Dude, that candy watermelon uh, Dude, I need to get a is so dope. Yeah, that's sexy as hell, man. The what? You like that? The candy watermelon. The yeah. cap's dope, too. Like, it almost sucks that you can't use the cap with it because it's just uh, such you a... You know what? I think I'm going to build the the Ardent to go on top there because he did the Ardent. And when it's all together, like just the colored parts, it's very, very sexy. Um, that's I gorgeous. I appreciate your, uh, your nice appreciation on it. Yeah, the guy, um, dang, I can never remember. I always have to look it up on Instagram. He's on Instagram. I believe he's called DLC Custom Coatings or D... DC uh, Customs. Yeah, if you see this on Instagram, I'll tag him in it so that way you can know. It's by David Cooper, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, DC Customs. DC is... Customs, there you go. Yep. There you go. Yeah, Cap is um, bad as fuck. Also, I am rocking The Nicely by Box Mod Mafia with The Gata on top dude uh, solid DNA's. rta right there bro dude right solid you, you, bro you, i can't get over how good this thing is in both both different settings mtl and direct lung it is awesome in both um and inside that i've got karango but the bottle's on the floor behind me so i'm not gonna get it i don't believe you huh i don't believe you yeah, dude, I got a whole bunch of bottles right there. They're on the floor, see? I don't see them. <laughs> anyway, last but certainly not least, I've been rocking this all day long, the billet box with the uh, Flow V2 inside and some <coughs> Detox from 5150, which is my all-time favorite, has taken over Paramon, and uh, it's pretty freaking delicious. So... That's what I've got going on. We have a couple extra little things right now. We're moving we're moving pretty fast. Actually, we're right on time, dude. We're yeah, right we on are. Time. It's so, a good show. You're a magician. Yeah, right? <laughs> Dang. You're magic. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what that means? That means it's time for everybody's favorite segment of every week. Bam! <laughs> Is that a bumper? <laughs> what? You gotta say it. What? No, you gotta It'll know. You gotta, when he says it. no, you it's your job to know. Yeah, it's you like, gotta know. Bah! When I say when I, I say the, the segment name, you gotta know there's a bumper. No, bro. he says it's time for this or that. That's literally the segment name. <laughs> yeah, with the picture daily. Yeah, but then he says TV. BAM! What's the yeah. build in the warlock? Um the build in the warlock's hammer is a point one fused alien setup they're they're about a week old so they're a little dirty um that's what i got in there right now so okay let me put this back on hold on okay that's the best bumper you did you like that one with the duck chasing <laughs> the, yeah, the cape crusaders hashtag, hashtag chicken, chicken arms bro, bro. That's yeah, dude. Fantastic. Chicken arms. yeah hashtag chicken arms oh yeah dude hey check it out i got that too hey I got that too. So I can't see like that. Oh, it's blue. I know. Mine has mine has elvish elven writing in Dude, it. Dude, but it's... but it's <laughs> it's blue. But she put I... like the zebra stripes in it and everything. It's awesome. You just can't see it real good on the black. 
Um, I love my Elven writing, but it's not my logo. It's just way more badass than everybody's combined. The one vape to rule them all, bro. Yeah. yeah, but what number is yours? 007. Shit. Wow. <laughs> all right. You got the more badass number. That's badass. Wow, asked- Stan. Way to show off. Dude, Stan, that's the exact reverse. That's the exact reverse of our, our argument over our checkmates. You're like, it's 007. I was like, but mine's number two. And you're like, but 007 is cooler because it's 007. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it is the exact argument. Um, okay, so this is that this week. This was provided by my dude, Mr. Frames Janklin. Um, I didn't tell any of the other panel members what it was, but I'm going to let you guys know it's a tough one. Would you rather every shirt you ever wear be kind of itchy, which is a horrible problem to have. Terrible. Or only be able to use one ply toilet paper. Oh, sorry, can you can you repeat that? I, I zoned out. Dude, okay. So Would you rather I'd... every shirt that you own or ever will wear be kind of itchy or only be able to use one ply toilet paper. Go ahead, James. Th- this one's a tough one, bro. This one's a tough one. Um, Cause I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the shirt I'm wearing right now has been kind of itchy all fucking night. <laughs> oh no. Like, and it's I've been like scratching. Like, I don't know what it is, dude, but for some reason my shirt has just been itching the shit out of me all show. So I'm almost to the point where I'm going to pick the one ply two paper t- toilet paper <laughs> just cause yeah. I'm like dying. Cause you know what? You could always just like take a couple extra wraps. There of the you one go. Ply, yes. You know what I'm saying? So I'm yeah. going to go with the one ply bro. Cause this itchy shirt situation I'm going through right now is it's it's like it, the struggle is real right now. Well, should we put gonna, a, should we put a limit on how much toilet paper you're allowed to use per? You section? have to because you know what? Oh, <laughs> like are you talking about like one five piece? sheets, one sheet, one, one sheet of one. No, ply. no, no. Let's say you get five square. squares, five squares of one ply or itchy shirts for life. <laughs> uh, dude, I, I'm still gonna go with because you know what? At the end of the day, if a finger slips through the paper, I could wash my hands, bro. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't like poop hands. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> hey, dude. Dude, just Ooh. you know what? I'm gonna. I'll Ooh. annex everybody. It will just just buy a bidet, dude. Just get hey, black underwear, real, dude. Bidet. It. Why do you have single? Stan, why do you have why one ply? Have dude? a roll of toilet paper just ready to go. No, I'm gonna use this real quick because this. The, okay. Oh no! Don't use it now. Oh my no, god, dude! <laughs> Not on hashtag after show, bro. <laughs> After my show. friend told me, streak it, dude. My friend told me <laughs> that when he went wagons. into the army, when he went into the army, you guys are talking about. Uh, I'm not going to make this too graphic. When he went into the army, they told him they gave him a, one sheet of toilet paper, and they said you need to keep this sheet, take care of it. This is your toilet paper. And he said what they did was they said fold it in fourths and rip off the corner. So he did, and then they said open it up, stick your finger through. And that's your toilet paper. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much the situation that's going to happen when you go to use this. <laughs> one fly, bro. It's just, it's going to automatically turn into that, dude. So disgusting. Oh, it's so disgusting. This is brutal, bro. This one's you get on your finger. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> but you got to think, hey. would you rather have like poo on your finger for like, you know, a second All right. until you wash your hands you or convince just me guys, you convince forever? me. I'm going to check. I'm going to choose itchy shirts because the, that the, the alternative sounds awful. And also pain, <laughs> pain is beauty, right? Pain is beauty. Not in this hey, dude, scenario. Like look at you pulls bathroom, out the back a scratcher. <laughs> I'm getting itchy just thinking about it. <laughs> dude. <laughs> So wait, wait. Why do we have put so many limits on the toilet paper, but not the itchy sh- like shirt? Well, what limitations are you gonna put on an itchy shirt, bro? Yeah. How many hours? It only itches, only itches around, around the nipples. It, it only, only itches, itches at noontime. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Like what? But can you just take it off? Time. Can you just take it off? Uh oh. Twelve o'clock is coming around the so corner. You can't, tell you me can't go like around. You can't go around your whole life not wearing a shirt. No shoes, no shirt. Dude, yeah. I will go topless What's for ninety percent of my life, and until I go into a store that says no shoes, no like, shirt. Oh, no what, what's Nick no doing? Shirt. What's Nick doing? Oh, he takes his shirt off every day at noon. I don't know why. Nick's going to claim activism for free the nipple. <laughs> I'm down. 
Oh, wow. Oh, my Lanta said I caught a case for brown fingers once. Oh, oh, what did it Thank taste like? Oh, hand wash our hands or no? Yeah, it brings a whole new emphasis to smell my finger. Huh? Oh, God. oh God. hey, let me paint you a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna go with one ply. <laughs> I've dealt with like all right. Growing up, my parents used to have like the worst toilet paper ever. Uh, but I used a lot of it. So I mean, I, I guess if we, like, <laughs> he's figured five it square out. limit. He's got it down to a science. If we got like five squares, I can deal with five squares. <laughs> I can make it work. All right, I am a sniper when it comes never, to one You never one said pie. we couldn't use tortilla chips. <laughs> oh, what did uh, what did what did Black Cat say? Like bean dip. Uh, <laughs> you ever had a hemorrhoid stand? Oh god! Bean dip again. You ever had a hemorrhoid in your life? No. Let me tell you something. I worked for I worked for this company one time. We were going through like financial ruins. They heard the company, and one of the things they got rid of was nice toilet paper. They brought in this oh. roll of toilet papers everywhere. That was like one fucking, it was like one fly, super thin, terrible, like real small. Paper. It was like this big and it like ripped it literally. You don't have to, I to go to the bathroom every day and it like literally ripped my ass apart. And okay. it was like the worst thing ever, ever. <laughs> like I ended up bringing like my own toilet paper to work. Like that's not an easy conversation. <laughs> when you like have, bring in your own toilet paper to work, people are like, Dude, you know what you got to do? Wet you got to do this. You got to no. bring, you bring your water bottle into the stall with you and you just, wet, you dampen oh. a, a section of it at the end and you just give yourself a nice little clean to make sure it would just melt. All right. Out. All right. Well, before it gets so I would into, go, before I would you guys get into it. details, it's already been detailed. <laughs> I would probably go with itchy shirt. I, I'll tell you, actually, one time my butt hurt so bad. <laughs> oh God, I can't believe I'm going to tell you this. One time my butt hurt so bad, I it, it, I actually just took my underwear off, wiped my ass with that, and flushed them down the toilet. Oh! oh! <laughs> Listen, all right, wait, wait, like, wait, wait. Hold on, wait. I don't want to get were into they the details, disposable kind. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it's, Side those note: boxer briefs, so they're super heavy. I guarantee it's stuff, dude. No, no, nothing's worse than being a landscaper because where are you going to go besides the back of the trailer? All right. So how many, I don't, how many I've, plumbers I've had have to wipe my ass with leaves and everything else? Hey, man, save your tree, use an owl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with itchy shirt because I could deal with the itchy shirt. Uh, dude, if you I, were in the I, situation I I'm up. in right now, you wouldn't be saying the same, bro. I could, dude. I've been itching my shirt the whole time, and it's itching <sighs> on the back where the logo is. <laughs> but it's brutal. No, I, I, I'm, I'm an itchy shirt guy. I cannot give up the, the. That is one first world problem that I never. Are want you to a deal Charmin with man? One ply toilet paper. Charmin. <laughs> I can't deal with it. I can't. I cannot deal with it. Um, you ever been to India, Stan? You ever been to India? No, no, I don't want to, like no. Yeah, you shit, you shit right a hole in the floor. There's a yeah, toilet. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Like I a goddamn like aborigine, <laughs> you just fucking like bend down, take a shit like a. Like, All right, and like, how, how have they, how have they not like thought about a toilet yet? <laughs> how have they not been like, this is not a great idea. Like, can we move on to get a fucking toilet right there and shit in the hole, hole in the ground? No, they have the they have toilets, but they're for handicapped people. Oh, oh yeah. they actually, hey everybody! They actually... I appreciate you guys being here this evening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the panel for being here. Black Cat, White Face. Make sure you go check him out uh, in the description. What are you scratching now? I don't want to know. Never mind. Um, don't in, answer that. <laughs> in the description, uh, there will be a link for Black Cat, White Face, and for Frames Janklin Vapor Channel. Is there anything you guys want to say before we get out of here? Yeah, that statement you just made would have been really weird if this was a podcast. <laughs> what do you, you should make this now. a podcast why why don't we have this as a um, podcast actually i tried there's a bunch of vape stews loaded up to uh i've been paying for premium service on soundcloud for a while there is a vape stew soundcloud i'll start loading them up again um if you guys want to get vape stew soundcloud um so go check that out i'll put that link in the description too that'll be cool um and there's a bunch of older ones on there but i'll, I'll start uploading them again um okay anything else you want to say um i got something for for the people a little food for thought uh i did you know unfortunately i forgot to do this on the green room it's how i end the show every week now so i figured i'd do it here since you guys missed out on the green room and it's uh some food for thought or some wise words from my main man confucius and this week confucius say men who drop watch in toilet have shitty time <laughs> <laughs> 
Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> and with that, I'll just send out some positive vibes, Chris by fives to all you guys, and just thanks for having me on. And one pleasure. plies. And one plies. <laughs> positive vibes, Chris by five, and only use one ply. <laughs> Look, we do. We do. People, <laughs> if we can't have fun at the end of the show, then when can you have fun? Right? You guys stay safe. Make sure you guys go check out Twitch. Uh, are you doing your Twitch stream tonight? I don't think so. We don't have enough people. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Demo's out of town, so meh. We don't have all those rich people things. All right. So um, Daily Vape TV will be streaming this weekend, so check his channel out. Also, the High End Vape Forum is on Sunday at noon central. Make sure you check that out as well. You guys stay safe. Thank you very much for being here. Oh, lucidrda.com. 40% off Black Friday. Code is Black Friday. Go do it. Um, oh, by the way, Stan, I need that check for the promo I did on the green room for that sale. Ah, <laughs> hey, um, here's there. one more plug for Frames Janklin Vapor Channel. Uh, <coughs> go check that out. That's three times you owe me now. Yeah, and 50% um, so <laughs> off rescue juice. <laughs> Just, hey, uh, the code's Black Friday. It's 40% off the whole site. Um, so check that out, uh, lucidrda.com. And then after Monday... I'll be running a 30% off site or 30% off code for the rest of December. So make sure you get on the email list so that you can get that code and be first. I will, I have already ordered a re up, so I will be upping more, um, more stock for that sale as well. You guys stay safe. You guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And remember, Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> oh, what drops, Mike? <laughs> they bond friends. <laughs> Hit that button. Hit the button, Stan. Hold on. Oh,